Hello everyone and welcome to the 59th episode of the Top 5 Weekly. In this series, each week we look at the most popular workshop creations on Steam. We analyze each one of the submissions, we discover their features, and finally we test them out here in the world of Stormworks. Now, if you're enjoying these videos, comment below and me else you'd like to see any of my future videos. Why there, don't forget that like and subscribe button and make a little bell icon to know if my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So all said, Let's get straight into it and get started with the first creation of this episode. And starting off with the first creation of the episode, we have the Scania Touring. This is a creation done by Cloudy. Now, this, as it says, is a Scania Touring bus. A couple of characteristics with it as a automatic transmission, top speed about 120 kilometers per hour, a fuel capacity of 1,800 liters. Uh, there's a fuel consumption, 43 seats in there also. Uh, so pretty cool. Uh, apparently also has an anti-roll uh, protection, there's differential, there's cruise control, climate control, all these kind of cool things inside there. It's definitely interesting to see how this one works. So let's go and spawn this in and see how it drives. And spawning in this scanner, you can see this is quite a quite a big little bus. Um, pretty cool, nice design. Obviously you've got kind of quite a few paint blocks here in the front of the actual bus itself. Um, we've got some headlights and we also have some spotlights and things. Over there, uh, going around the side, seems like we have some type of like laser distance sensor. I'm um, guessing a whole bunch of windows. We also have, looks like cameras, and we also have some monitors there for the mirrors. Uh, going along, obviously, just the wheels themselves. Seems like we have some type of hatch. Uh, I'm just gonna open that up. So, guessing it's like a fake cargo hatch of some sort. Uh, let's go and close that off. Uh, can I close it? There we go. Okay, moving along, we also have a exhaust on the side. Seems like we have some type of other hatch there, but it's not opening up. Uh, well, at least there's no button, I think, uh, to open it. So let's go around the back. Uh, once again, the whole bunch of paint blocks here at the back seems like a rear view camera, um, some tail lights, etc. Going around the side, so we do have a toggle button here we can open up okay so we have an engine hidden in there okay let's turn the lights off and let's see if we can close this okay and moving along seems like another hatch i'm guessing another cargo hatch yeah it's not a cargo hatch uh, fake cargo hatch for obviously briefcases and so on and so forth so closing that off um then we have a entrance door seems like another laser sensor over here uh nice little sliding door you can go up and get inside or try to at least do a little crouching jumping action there um doesn't seem like we can actually close it i'm guessing there's a control over there nice little cockpit there lots of controls and things which is pretty cool and then we have all the seating um now he has gone looks like he has gone to detail of actually individually putting lights on every single one of these seats which is a cool it's a nice touch it's very detailed seems like a little skylight there at the back uh and we have a guessing an emergency oh no it doesn't look like an emergency it just looks like a like a hatch to obviously get some cooling inside there in there uh, we have another door here at the back that you can go and open oh what's this um not too sure what that is maybe another seat or equipment or some sort i'm not too sure so, oh refrigerator okay that's pretty cool um i'm guessing it's another door here but um yeah probably a control from the outside okay let's go and get in the driver's seat so driver's seat we have a couple controls uh light mode interior lights is there any interior oh wow okay so you got the strips there uh another interior lights okay so the big lights and you can switch them okay pretty cool um ignition we have front door middle door. ah okay front door middle doors so we close that off um changing lane assistance climate control temperature up and down okay we have middle monitor three mode roll protection up and down cruise mode torque parking brake fuel open connector okay so that's the connector at the back there you can see to refuel it pretty cool uh cruise option temperature and cockpit and cruise speed okay let's get this started and here it's starting there we got rpm neutral um can this per an hour i'm guessing it's just put our foot down yeah just literally WSAD nice and easy changes gear for you um, let's just stop it here for two seconds so we have this middle monitor oh, okay so that switches to map and camera and yeah back to the original screen so that's quite useful um, talking break talk etc let's just see how it actual handles around some corners and things so we'll get it started up here seems like it's pretty good so far it seems very steady 
Let's go and pick up some speed and start doing some turns here. Okay, so it is rolling slightly, but not much. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to be able to pick up enough speed here, to be fair. Right, let's try and turn it again. Okay, so it is slightly rolling. Let's put the anti... Oh, that's climate control. Anti-roll protection. I don't know what it's doing, though. I don't know if it's actually done anything. Maybe it's made it a little bit stiffer. I could be wrong. Um... But yeah, it just looks like a really nice, nice little bus there. I don't know, it seems like it possibly can, but I guess there's not getting enough speed here, to be honest. Uh, we obviously have cruise control, um, fuel connectors, up and down the temperatures, so it's pretty much got everything you need uh, in here. Um, changing lane assistance, not too sure what that does, to be honest. Um, we obviously have our cameras and things but you can't really see them especially over there um, but yeah it looks it looks really cool um, don't see any indicator lights anywhere unless yeah we turn that off Did we get them back no we don't get any indicator lights on um, but yeah really nice nice little bus definitely something nice to obviously roam around the islands with especially on like soy islands or up in the arctic and so on and so forth so really cool bus definitely a nice one to start this episode off let's go and move on to the next creation of the episode and moving on to the next creation of the episode we have the aiso containers this is a creation or set of creations done by a couple creators. There's Lekanotova, there's uh, John Storm, there is also I Am Cats Really. Now, these containers themselves is meant to be a new standard of containers. Now, this was in development to regard of the new ISO standard and also Nikon's ISO container standards. Um, so pretty much what they've done is they've developed a set of standard containers, 10 foot, 20 foot, 30 foot, and 40 foot. Um, Apparently the width is 11 blocks, the basic height is 12 blocks, and obviously then it stretches out. Apparently these are meant to be a new, better standard than what we have before. Uh, they also look really cool, so let's go and spawn them in and see the differences between them, and also see how they look and how they react here in the world of Stormux. And spawning in the containers, you can see they look really cool, and obviously a little bit different from what we're kind of used to here. Now, I'm not too sure what's going on with this, it seems like we've got a little bit of a straight block just along there uh, I could be wrong but um, you can kind of see yeah we got the 10 foot 20 foot 30 and 40 uh, going around we also have a see-through one which I'm guessing would be to hold like fuel or whatever um, but yeah really cool um, obviously they have an option to obviously open open them which is nice of course he's got a little bit of writing on them which is obviously quite nice you can see the standard you can see 11 times 13 uh, along with that is we have disconnect up and disconnect down. So that's for the electrical connectors. And then I'm guessing the same on the back. Yep, yeah. so exactly the same on the back. Uh, no door at the back though. And yeah, it just pretty much repeats throughout uh, up and down disconnects. Uh, seems like we have some holes there. I'm guessing that's for forklifts. I, I, I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong. And exactly the same for the 20 foot. Uh, you can see he's actually done this really well uh, it's all pretty much set up all you have to do is take these download them change the colors if you want to put some art on them and, and that's pretty much your container it's all set it's got a really nice standard to it um, I do like the connectors um, I think the connectors are a pretty cool thing especially at the top uh, I'm not too sure if they actually have any at the bottom because you can't really see them unless they're actually pointing down and obviously glitching through this uh, that could possibly be the case but yeah really quite nice nice to obviously see some standards uh, in Stormworks now we have seen a couple of iterations of that so uh, there's obviously different opinions to which ones you should be using uh, obviously different creators use different ones to design things for example like those those ones they are different to these that's a different standard uh, so once again it would be nice if everyone just decides on a specific standard and stays with it and uses it uh, but it's nice that people obviously are coming up with these standards uh, across all the Stormworks game especially with obviously upcoming features in the Stormworks uh, you know we're not too sure what we're going to get uh, so these might be coming in play and might be quite useful especially when using multiple different creations that they all just work and they all just fit instead of having everyone having different sizes so really quite nice let's go ahead let's move on to the next one of the episode and moving on to the next creation of the episode we have the super caracal 
This is a creation done by D-Bones. Now this is meant to be a multi-role bi-rotor helicopter with a thrust propulsion um, for fast rescue operations, crew, cargo, and medium vehicle transportation. Now apparently it has a top speed of about 290 knots. So that's quite interesting. Uh, crew speed, uh, 175 knots, fuel consumption, etc. Um, it's got a range at full speed is 100, sorry, 330 kilometers. There's a cargo bay in size there. Um, there's a little bit of a startup guide and etc. etc. etc etc along with that a couple different modules in there there's a jet engine diesel module etc feature wise it's got a gps autopilot system um, altitude stabilization system two water cannons medical room uh, auxiliary batteries uh, fuel hoses all kinds of everything compass touch screens etc uh, etc et 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 so let's go let's spawn this one in and see how it flies here in the world of stomachs and spawning in the next crate, and you can see this thing is quite a big helicopter um, I think you know call it a helicopter it's just a dual blade helicopter slash jet thing I'm not too sure it's really big uh, but it looks pretty cool definitely loads of detail you can see here we have kind of like this cockpit at the front uh seems like we have some sensors and some radio stuff uh, going along temperature sensor seems like a door i don't know if there's a button to get in uh but we'll carry on it's, i can see these arrows but i don't know no, it doesn't seem like it is it is a little bit choppy to be honest uh seems like another door over there once again i'm not too sure how we get in there oh uh, we do have a button over here i guess there's a door somewhere okay so there's a door button there now some paint blocks detailing going along there some ladders to get up to the top there we have obviously the dual rotors um wa hmm. maybe refilling i'm not too sure uh let's carry on going along we seem to have obviously the back tail with a door to load some cargo in i don't see any buttons anywhere uh to open those doors up and obviously the back tail with some rotors on it and some tail fins and so on so some more paint blocks going around some more flares and things seems like we have some containers uh so jet fuel and diesel that you can actually load into the cargo bay if i'm correct uh seems like i got some connectors and things yeah got some connectors and things they're pretty cool and the door on the side so let's go into the other side and let's see what it is now, there's a startup procedure for this oh, i like the little ladder it's pretty cool nice paint blocks um so definitely check out the startup procedure if you're trying to fly this out uh i have looked, briefly looked over it uh, so we're just gonna go and see how we can get through it to be honest uh so we've got some seating here at the back with it looks like a harness that goes and drops down we've got some screens some parachutes some equipment general equipment some more seats and things uh going on we have some more equipment we seem to have a hatch okay so it's a little lift okay and then up oh wow okay we have another floor let's get some lights on uh what do we have up here some more screens and things seems like a medical area uh, bed yeah it's just a medical area and some beds and things it's quite interesting we actually have an elevator in a helicopter slash tricopter thing uh let's go down and oops hello uh, okay i kind of got stuck there uh carrying along we have the cargo area here like i just used the ropes there um uh, look, we have a control to go to the ramp three positions fuel hoses pump tanks etc release connector and this is where you would put those put those things inside um not too sure looks like it's just not lining up i'm guessing maybe this opens up i, I don't know i could be wrong um ramp three positions okay we have one position two position and three position what's three Okay, well, I guess three is closed. Okay, whole bunch of connectors and things for refilling mag oils. Uh, we have module connector position. Okay, not sure what that does. Um, release pump jet fuel, release connectors, cable in, out, and connector. Okay, so just a whole bunch of connectors. Oh, okay, you can see. Oh, okay, so we have this kind of module here at the top that goes and drops down. I guess you can then pick up, pick up those containers that are outside um let's carry on along with something else here let's go in front so we have just some more detailing some more paint blocks seems like we have some fuel tanks some more equipment and then we actually have the cockpit itself so co-pilot and pilot uh we have a whole bunch of deck up fuel lock deck pump tanks 
all these connectors, hook connectors, okay. Some screens, a rotor connector, flares, pump jet fuel, top panel, water can, water can and control. What? Well. Oh, okay, so we actually get some controls. Interesting. Okay. Uh, is there any power switch? I'm sure there is a power switch. We'll come back to it for once. Uh, bottom panel, winch control. Okay, so different panels that fold down depending on what you need to do. Pretty cool. Radio, weather alarm. Uh, we also have pump fuels, auxiliary mains, fuel controls, tilt cameras, infrared mode. Uh, we have lights, searchlights, battery booster, ignition booster, rotor clutch, open cargo bay hatch. That's the cargo bay we saw earlier. Gyro autopilot, gyro autopilot, stop at waypoints, GPS waypoint, a whole bunch of speakers and things, uh, avionics main battery, auxiliary battery, okay, engine, oh, hello, uh, now we've got a ton of controls, wow, whole bunch of different controls here, not screen, I'm not sure what that does, ah, oh, turbo, gear down, bay closed, heady mode, your speed, camera, ramp, map, wow, okay, what's the map, check the map out, Okay, so pretty much yeah, just a regular map, camera, uh, rotors, fuel, auxiliary fuel. Wow, so many panels and things, different screens. Really cool. Let's go and get the ignition booster and engine on. Rotor clutch, we don't need on. Get started up here. I didn't see a throttle. I'm guessing it's just fine. I'll just leave it here to get going. Let's turn the ignition booster off I'm guessing collective right to clutch yeah I guess we can get the clutch on now yep there we go now if I'm correct we should just be able to fly it see it moving yep there we go and we're going up Pretty easy controls, just like a normal helicopter to be honest. Very steady though, very 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 steady. Now what I want to try is, where is the altitude hold? I can see an altitude, gear down, okay where's gear up? Now let me get four, so you can see our gears have folded down now. There's water cannons at the bottom underneath there with some flares and things. Really cool. This thing's got so many different things going on. Um, where is our different controls? So I'm sure there must be a way to set gyro autopilot to stop at waypoint. Um, see, I was hoping for a altitude hold, but but for a pilot, but no altitude. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm missing something. Uh, to be honest, let's just try the autopilot in case. Maybe it's just holding the altitude by default. Um, I could be wrong. Let's go put that in. G gyro autopilot on. And. Autopilot on. We've set the waypoints. Oh, I think we need switch mode. So, up, down, on. And one, two, thrust. Okay, hold on. So up, down. It's collective. Okay. German. Okay. How do we activate this autopilot? Hmm. Don't need any of this on. Maybe I'll just know. Stop it, waypoints. Distance to waypoints, yeah, it seems like it's all on. Don't need anything else. Now, once again, I said earlier, I didn't, I'm not following the instructions, so I probably am missing something, to be honest. Um, let's put the thrust. Oh, there we go. Yeah, put thrust on, now it's turning. Ooh, hold on. Go up, go up, go up, go up. Up, 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 up. Just getting it up a bit, so I missed this mountain range. And let's now go and put the thrust on. 
Now it should go and turn. Yeah. We'll put the thrust all the way up. Is there a thrust level? Yeah. Oh, turbo. We'll get the speed up. Well, that's pretty cool. What's our speed? 110, altitude 141. So altitude is hovering by itself, which is pretty cool. You can see our RPS is going up. We're getting a nice speed. Very nice speed. Is it going to stop? Let's see. Oh, wow. It's automatically stopping. Nice. Yeah, so this thing is a powerhouse. It's got everything you need. Now, I'm really cool to see these controls that come and fold down. That is cool. Zoom out, zoom in. Water hose down. Up, down. Left and right. Pump water. Water cannon. So we're pump. Yeah, look at that. That's because it's got a camera on the water cannons underneath. Very cool. Very, very cool. I like that. You can just ditch here and just, yeah, pretty much do anything you want. So you can go right, you can zoom in a bit, up, down. Let's zoom in, let's zoom in a bit. Yeah, that is cool. That's really nice. And I like the addition of that screen. Where you can just fold it in and let's get the next one. Oh, I've got a control panel. That's cool. Look at that. Nice. Get rid of that. Docking hinge connectors. Okay, so I'm missing back, back there. Yeah, really cool, really cool powerhouse. Oh, absolutely awesome. Definitely love it, Grace. Definitely go check this one out. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next one of the episode. And moving on to the next creation of the episode, we have the Amarok. This is a creation done by a creator called Tex. Now, this is meant to be a do-it-all aircraft in the Alpha series of Eagle Works, apparently. Now, it's a cargo aircraft carrying capacity. Uh, pretty cool. It's also got two flowers of uh, two hours of flight time, 400 kilometer range inside there. A couple of cool features uh, and specifications you got here on the workshop. GPS autopilot system. There is 234 knot max speed, 400 kilometer range as we said already. Two hours of flight time, 50% throttle. There's a P. Uh, PFD, there's MDFs with six different pages on there, there's uh, in-air refueling also, there's cargo, uh, all kinds of cool things in there. So let's go, let's spawn this one and see how it flies here in the world of Stormworks. And spawning in the next creation, you can see this thing looks really cool. I love the design of using these propellers. Uh, it just makes this plane look absolutely gorgeous. Um, it seems like we have some, I'm guessing, fuel tanks on the side here that also hold the landing gear now going on we actually have kind of like an observer deck here at the front which is pretty nice uh we also have a button oh there's a door that opens up that's quite cool we'll go down to that in a few seconds uh landing gear at the bottom uh some lights some connectors on there uh we also have what's in here toggle button okay so fuel in the water obviously pretty useful fuel and electricity at least uh along with that we have seems like some bombs of some sort maybe some, uh, maybe some fuel connect fuel pylons there we have some spotlights uh, we seem to have mid so air refueling capabilities there at the back with some more paint blocks and things we have a big cargo ramp here at the back uh, and it looks like the same on the other side any doors no doors on this side so let's go back to the other side where we were now going up a little ladder to get inside uh this thing looks huge uh we'll go by right and it's going to the cargo bay so nice cargo bay nice design full of details some maggle connectors looks like some rail systems going along here some more rail systems seems like a whole bunch of controls connectors cranes heating horn cabin lights in there really cool uh Upper rail guards. Okay, so the rail guards are up there. So let's get the ramp down. Oh, no, maybe get the rail guards off. Okay, and then. Okay, so you can actually stop things from going out and you can raise and lower that. That's quite nice. And then let's get that off and then we can close that. It's almost kind of like a lock almost. And close it. Or well, maybe we're not meant to have it closed. We'll leave it open. Um, okay, so kind of like a lock of some sort. Pretty cool. Uh, let's carry on moving along. So nicely detailed. It's got a lot of detail in here, which is always nice to see. Um, seems like we have 
an electricity panel of some sort over there uh, going along some equipment some parachutes and we have this observation deck kind of thing we we're looking at here compass screens on off so we have map sonar scanner of some sort fuel temperatures comms lights radar power cool okay is that the radar on there maybe possibly i'm not too sure let's go turn that off uh let's go up to the top okay so going along some more equipment and things the ladder that we came up let's go into the main area over here so what we have over here so we have heater uh pylons fuel pumps left right external left right external pumps heaters left fuel line out fuel chute pylons left pump left fuel pump on why not right fuel pump on why not turn the light off here additional batteries camera xyz uh fuel parachute okay looks like we're good with all that stuff um once again we have pilot seat and pilot seat not too sure which one i need to use so i'm just gonna get in the left one so we have a whole bunch of lights here at the top pretty cool uh, automatic anti-ice, engine starter 1, 2, anti-ice, extend wings, we need that, flares discharge, no, engine starter 1, 2, 3, 4, MDFs on off, let's get the MDFs on, cool, so maybe this is the controls, maybe that's the controls, I'm not too sure, um, flap setting, flaps up and down, aero refueling, throttle, all our different screens, maps, MDFs, alarms, spoilers landing gear wheel brakes okay so once again i'm not too sure which one i'm meant to be sitting in i'm gonna okay so it looks like we've got control on the right hand side uh bank hold altitude hold autopilot hold radio transmit pretty simple autopilot going on it's pretty simple there so let's get the throttle let's try and get throttle up a bit and let's get our engine one starter engine two starter engine three engine four and let's check our engine and check all that's going our brake is on there we go engines are turning nice so far okay is there a way to get our actual rotors working anti-ice no acl acl lights i'm guessing okay nav lights taxi lights okay well, that's going got fuel we got map we got screen comms navigation pretty much everything you need here which is great mtf there okay rotors are turning we can probably get the brakes off looks like we are moving very slowly which is fine uh let's go and see if we can turn can we turn the landing gear yep landing gear is turning we are moving it's quite a little bit slow, let's get the throttle up a bit. Trying to move a little bit quicker here and make a good turn. And we'll turn and try and hit up from that runway there. Try and get the throttle up a bit more. Turn my light off. Okay, we are moving now. Okay, and still turning a bit so we'll just turn here and then we'll make a sharp turn to go the other runway okay seems like we might be going a bit fast that's fine let's make a sharp turn ah oh, no we're fine let's now start turning in the opposite direction for the runway Okay, performance is pretty good for such a big creation like this. I'm very surprised, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's handling very well. Getting lined up now with the runway. I want to just increase the speed just a bit. I wonder if I can control the speed. No, I, I can't control the speed with any hotkeys, unfortunately. Let's make a sharp turn here. And I'm going to hit the brakes on and increase our throttle all the way up as soon as we get lined up. Runway might not be big enough to be honest. Uh, okay, so let's get wheel brakes on. Okay, so we're on. Let's get throttle all the way up. Okay, and wheel brakes off. Should be able to climb now. Yep, 
Just like that. Look how smooth and simple. Ooh, hold up. Look how smooth and simple that was. That was super easy. Let's get our landing gear. Folds away nice and clean. This thing handles really well. It's very nice and easy and smooth. Oh, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Really, really cool. And obviously you have all the extra controls here. Hold, shoot, hold, on, off. Yeah. Bank hold, autopilot hold, radio transmit. Just like that, nice and easy. Nice and simple, nice and clean. Just what you want in the plane, of course. Really nice and smooth. Gorgeous design. Really like this one. Uh, really good. Let's go ahead, let's move on to the next creation of the episode. And moving on to the last creation of the episode, we have the Grunman G21 Goose. This is a creation done by Thales. Now he's done a couple of episodes, creations already on the episodes. Um, now this is meant to be a one-to-one -one skill, first off. It's an amphibious flying boat. Uh, it's meant to have a couple cool features in there. Ability of obviously a uh, refillable water tank from the water that you can go and refuel. There's uh, sort of different com four different compartments with bilge pumps in there. There's uh, Apparently a really good flight performance. Uh, there is good water and land taxi performance, GPS autopilot, altitude hold, BFF marine radio, uh, a couple other different cool features in there. So definitely a nice one to check out. So let's go and let's spawn this one in and see how it flies here in the world of Stormworks. And spawning in the last creation of the episode, you can see this thing is really cool. It's nice and small. It's not too, it's not too big. It's not, it looks, it's good proportioned. Um, really quite nice. I love the little engines. Also love the color scheme here. Uh, looks really nice. Now going along, it uh, seems like we have some kind of rope uh, with a maggle connector here at the front. I'm guessing that might just be to pull it. Um, I could be wrong. We also have some fin rudders here underneath. I'm guessing that helps it while it's in the water. Uh, I guess we'll have to try land in the water and see how it works. Uh, we also have a fuel hatch and some landing gear of course. Um, so just some fuel hatch with a cross feed left and right tank etc quite nice to actually put that inside there um some windows and things looks like a oh this is a little door to get in uh, we have some flares on the engines here and we also have some pontoons on the side going back to the rear of the boat um, we have some nice little logos and paint blocks and things like that so it's a goose logo there uh, pretty much exactly the same on the other side doesn't look like there's any other doors or anything to get in uh, pretty straightforward and just very nice and simple um, let's go and actually get inside. So I'm guessing we just go and crawl in. Yep, that was pretty simple. Uh, close the door. Inside here we have a aft cabin door. So in here there is some parachutes, there is a light cabin door. Is that the toilet? Oh wow, it is too. A very tiny small little toilet. We have lights. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go and close that off. Uh, let's go and get into the main cabin and close that. We have, so these are all central apartments with its own drainage system so that's pretty cool some seating uh, obviously quite important uh, we have some lights we have a cockpit door and the cockpit with quite a bit of controls actually inside here and we have a steering wheel uh, which is not usually what you see on a plane but um still cool we have startup procedure um, morning message that's nice he's gonna enable that uh, fold unfold seat oh there's another extra seat there cool uh, let's close the door we have APU, okay, uh, actually I don't even know if we need that, we'll leave it off. Uh, launch failures, uh, prop pitch, throttle, generators, fuel pumps, left engine, right engine, what else, battery master, magnetos, instrument lights, heaters, landing lights, strobe lights, nav lights, cabin lights, bilge pumps, up down channel, push to talk, water intake pump, altitude hold autopilot, altitude hold autopilot, seat up down. Ooh, that's pretty cool. You can raise a seat here if you want to. That's quite nice. And some things at the top, left engine, right engine, um, fuel pumps, generators, batteries, throttle, a couple of different things. So pretty cool. Nice. I like these put the instructions. It's always nice. Battery. Battery masters on. Um, magnetos. Fuel pumps. Where were the fuel pumps? I saw them somewhere. There we go. Uh, generators. Do we need generators? Uh, fuel pumps, hold engine starters at 120 RPM, okay. 
So hold until 120. Oh, it's RPM. Where's RPM? Here. There we go. Guess we're good. So we're over 120. Nope. We're over 120. Maybe what else we're missing? Generators? We don't need generators on it, I don't think. Let's put the engine hold and back on. I don't think we're missing anything. Bilge pumps we don't need. Turn up and down. Um, throttle's 15. Maybe the throttle needs to come up. I still don't hear anything turning over, which kind of makes me worried. Um, and it gets on parking brake. Yeah, that's fine. Batteries on, nectar, instrument lights, heater, strobe lights. Let's keep on the keep the starter on. Oh, I need to turn that. Okay. Generators, maybe get the throttle up. Let's go back to this. Okay, now it seems like those are ticking over. Yeah, we're good with the RPM. Okay, cool. Um, so we can get the throttle all the way up. Ooh, we can probably get parking brakes off. Where is the parking brake? Where is the parking brake here? Um, oh, parking brake is number four. Ooh, okay, we need to turn this as quick as possible. And uh, let's get parking brake off, which is four. Okay, and let's put it up here. Let's try and get it to take off. Come on, up you go. Okay, there we go. So, up down is throttle. Okay, and then you just literally are cruising like that. Nice and dear. Uh, let's get landing gear up. Landing gear goes and falls away nicely in the plane on the sides there. Handles pretty well too. Nice. Nice and smooth, nice and delicate. Looks really cool too also. Looks really nice. See that. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to try and land this bad boy. Um, uh, let's go and kill the throttle. And let's see how we can just go and land here. So it seems pretty smooth. And uh, let's go and increase it. Oh wow. That was very smooth. And very easy. I wasn't expecting it to be that easy. Let's get throw up. Let's get our prop pitch. Minus 15 for reverse. No, oh, no, we still need prop pitch up. So, prop pitch up. Let's get our throttle all the way up here. Let's go and turn it. Let's try and take off. Look at that. That was probably one of the cleanest water takeoffs I've ever seen. That was really good. That was really good. It performed really, really well. Yeah, what a nice plane. Got autopilot, altitude hold. It flies really well. It's nice and steady. Very, very nice. Very clean. I'm thinking those. Those really make a difference. Those um, little fin rudders that he's got there in the front. I think that makes a very different, big difference for the water takeoff and landing. Um, but yeah, what a nice little plane. Definitely a nice one to end this episode off with. So I think we'll go ahead and end today's video there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it something entertaining and informative as always. And we'll see you in the next one.